Hey everyone, I'm Loaf, DeadSide's lead community manager, and I have a bit more news for you about update 0.5.0. So far, we have gone through three different test builds, so you can expect this update to hit the public test server very soon. With the new boat system, there have been a ton of changes to the way the game server operates, so the performance of the public test server will dictate how soon we can release the update free wall. As for the update itself, we have a lot to talk about in this video. We have a new river in the southeast, we have some big changes to the convoy event, some good quality of life changes, and a huge economy rework which we will be talking about in detail later on in this video. But before we get into that, I can finally confirm for you all that this update will come with a global wipe of the game. This means everyone's progress is going to be completely reset, with all items and bases being deleted. We have to do this for technical reasons, if we don't wipe everyone's progress, some items will become broken and it's going to cause issues. So, now that you know the plan going forward, let's talk about some new features. First up, we have added a river into the southeastern section of the map, connecting the central lake to the east side of the peninsula. This should make it a lot easier to go between places like the bunker and the south safe zone by just using a boat. Another improvement is this industrial area in the southwest. It has been expanded and redesigned a bit. There are some new buildings and the area itself is a bit larger. You will now see blood splatters on walls if you shoot either a player or an AI close enough to a surface. While this won't affect gameplay too much, it's a nice visual change which should hopefully make the game a little bit more immersive. Speaking of AI, the convoy event has been reworked completely. The ghillie sniper version of the boss will no longer spawn anymore, instead there will always be a dedicated sniper bot in the patrol. The boss will not always be wearing the best armor anymore either. Sometimes he will have low tier armor, and he will also use a wider selection of weapons. Now he can use a UAG or SCAR, as well as his signature MG36. The AI of the boss is a bit less overpowered now, his aim isn't as perfect so you shouldn't get insta-killed as much anymore. While the main boss might be a bit weaker now, the rest of the convoy is much stronger. There will always be around 15 AI, and these AI will be very deadly. They have good aim and they will chase the player down. They are comparable to helicopter guard AI. On top of that, the loot of the case has been drastically improved. Three more new items have been added into the case. Now you can possibly get explosives, radio detonators, medexes, respawn beacons, and money. You will still get the previous two items that you get right now, so in total you will be getting five items every time you successfully open up a case. This should make the convoy case itself more worthwhile, as it seems right now most players choose to just leave it on the floor because of the risks involved getting it back to the safe zone outweighing the potential reward. Outside of those new features, there have been many small quality of life changes that I won't really be going into since it'll take too long. I will mention though that the infamous body unavailable bug has been fixed. If you didn't know, dead bodies that moved too far away from their original point of death had a bad habit of becoming unavailable. This means that nobody could loot the items on the dead player, which could be very frustrating, especially if that player has some good stuff. The issue would occur most often when falling from tall buildings or rolling down hills. This shouldn't be a problem anymore, which I'm sure is a relief to a lot of people. There are some boat mechanics that we haven't talked about yet, so let's get into that. Most likely, on the release of update 0.5.0, there will be a maximum of 10 boats on a server at once. Each boat can seat up to 5 people, each server has up to 50 players, so 10 boats is enough for everyone on the server to be in a boat at the same time. This allows everyone to have a boat while keeping server lag to a minimum. As I'm sure a lot of you know, you can build pretty large bases in Deadside. You can completely seal off a large section of land with just these fences. And unlike other games, Deadside has online only raiding. So, if someone decided to lock away all 10 boats behind a base fence, well then suddenly, nobody on that server can use a boat, which is obviously a big problem. So, what do we do? Well, we could just increase the amount of boats on a server, but that wouldn't really work. Not only would that have a serious impact on the server performance, but you can pretty easily shove 20 boats in a base, as you can see here, with plenty of room for more. And keep in mind that a populated server usually has upwards of 150 bases on the map at once. So, we have made a bit of a design choice that may be a bit disappointing to some, but I hope that you understand that it's the best solution to the problem that we can implement right now. And that solution is to have boats despawn. This will mean if you store a boat in your base, it will eventually despawn if nobody is around. 
meaning that you can't permanently have your own private boat. But this also means that boats will always be available around the map for you to find. This means that players will be constantly fighting for the boats out in the world since you can't just lock them in a base. This boat despawn system is just temporary though. We are working on a more complex solution that involves some new mechanics, so don't expect this system to stick around in later versions of the game. Next up, let's talk about the in-game economy. I mentioned in the last video that there would be some big changes, like food and water coming back to the safe zone traders, as well as other items that weren't previously there. Well, I may have undersold this facet of the update. In 0.5.0, there will be a complete economy redesign. Almost everything will be changing in one way or another. There's a lot to talk about here, so let's dig in. Starting with money itself, it will now be more valuable. Essentially, the value of the dead side dollar, or ruble, or whatever you want to call it, has gone up. So everything sells for less, everything costs less, you earn less money, you spend less money. There is just less money than before. It's important to keep this in mind when I cover other parts of the economic changes, because you will be seeing prices that are much lower than before, and if you didn't know the value of money has gone up, it would be very confusing. Another change that will be affecting the economy is an adjustment to backpacks. You can now store one weapon in an assault bag, two weapons in a typhoon, and three in a stalker. You guys have been asking to store more weapons in bags for a while now, so I assume you already know how useful this will be. I think it also incentivizes more PvP, since you can now loot the enemy's weapons while still having two of your own. Next, we have changes to how loot stacks in your inventory. Some items will have a lower limit on how much is in a stack than before. For example, bandages now stack to 5 instead of 10. The biggest change with stacking, though, is money stacks. In the current version of the game, version 0.4.2, you can stack money to pretty much an infinite amount, storing millions in a single slot of storage. Well, this will be changing in 0.5.0. You will only be able to have 100k maximum in a single slot of storage. Keep in mind that 100k is a good amount of money in 0.5.0, this is about equivalent to maybe 200 to 300k in update 0.4.2, but that's not an exact conversion rate. In any case, the idea here is to incentivize players to either spend their money, or move it to a less safe location, like their base. Event rewards have been adjusted as well. The Heli Crash reward now has less loot in total, but now they spawn red bunker keys, finally giving you a way to get red keys without being completely dependent on RNG. Cargo drops will now have a reward most similar to something like a medium or an easy mission, so they won't be dropping top tier loot as consistently as before. Another change that will impact all of this is that AI will not be using helmets and body armor as frequently anymore, making them a bit rarer. This places more importance on finding armor and event rewards, or just buying it yourself. And finally, the last part of this economy rework is the safe zone traders. If you play Deadside right now, in version 0.4.2, you will find that there really isn't that much to spend your money on. The best weapon that you can buy at the trader is just an AKSM, and it's not really even worth the money, since those are kind of easy to find. The only things people spend their money on right now are base items, ammo, and meds. And because those things are really low priced, what we are seeing right now is players with lots of money, and they don't spend that money. If you're an experienced player, you know exactly what I mean. I'm sure you do the exact same thing. This is part of why we have decided to add high tier items back into the safe zone. With this change, you will be able to buy any armor, any backpack, and pretty much any weapon, with the exception of the GRM-40 grenade launcher, and a few low tier guns, all right at the safe zone. Now, I know a good chunk of you are going to be skeptical about this change at first, and I get it. You might be worried that high tier items are going to be too easy to get, but don't worry. The prices of these high tier items are high enough that you will need to complete a good amount of PvE events before you can even buy a single high tier item. The best way to get the best gear in the game is still going to be farming high tier events. That won't be changing. What this change will do is make high tier items more accessible to less experienced players. It gives them something to work towards, and eventually they can get their hands on some good gear that they maybe otherwise couldn't get. Then they can actually compete with players who have a lot more loot than them, something they couldn't do before. Let's take a look at some of the prices of items in the safe zone. Here you can see the selection of weapons, and as you can see, the top tier weapons like the M99 and VSD are very expensive compared to everything else. Assault rifles are a bit more affordable, but the best ones are still decently expensive, 
The AR4 and Fasam at 60k might seem like not very much at first, but it will require a good amount of looting before you can get one. Here you can have a look at the food and water, as well as meds, and as you can see, they are pretty expensive, and that's done on purpose. Deadside needs some sort of money sink, and these are items that players will always be spending their money on. This also includes ammo, which is significantly more expensive than before. With these essential items being more expensive, it should make it harder to quickly gather a bunch of money and spend it on high tier weapons and armor. So, that's about all I have for you today. If you have any questions or feedback about the changes, feel free to leave them in the comments. Just like last time, I will try my best to respond to most of them. I hope you enjoyed the video and are excited for the update. Thanks for watching.